I believe it is your perfect will that my life be healed. Amen. How many of you really believe that? Can you believe tonight that it is God's will to move in your behalf right now? Praise God. Amen. Well, let's pray and agree on that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you now and praise you. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we just open our hearts up and set ourselves to be receptive to that which you have for us. We thank you, Lord God, for moving mightily in our midst. And in these next few moments, we give you all the praise. We release faith and place demand upon the anointing of God. And we receive your hand touching our lives and your will being done. We'll give you all the praise, glory, and the honor for we receive these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You can be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. We looked at this verse this morning, but I want to look at it again. 1 John, the third chapter, and verse 8. John writing here is speaking to the church, and he says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. For, the, for this very purpose Jesus came. This was his purpose for coming into the earth. What was the purpose for the Lord coming into this earth? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil? The Amplified Bible brings out, For this reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible to us. See, Jesus long existed before we ever saw him on the earth. Amen. You understand that? Jesus didn't just begin when he was born as babe in the manger. He was God incarnate at the manger. Praise God. He was God long before he ever became Jesus Christ on the earth. He was the son of God. He's the word. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs, he's the wisdom of God. And everything was made by and through him. Glory to God. So Jesus took upon himself flesh and blood and came to this earth and came to us and was made visible to us. Why? So he could undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil has done. Notice he said the devil may have already done it, but Jesus came to destroy it. Praise God. Aren't you glad that if the devil attacks you and actually gets something on you, the Lord has come to undo that? See, Satan can't keep you tied up in knots because every time he ties a knot around you, God will come along and tie, untie it. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time the enemy tries to put something on you, Jesus comes to destroy it out of your life. Every time the enemy comes and tries to keep you in bondage, Jesus comes to loose you from it. Praise the Lord. See, that's his purpose. The purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ is to undo anything and everything that the devil's done in your life. That's good news, folks. You need to get a hold of that, praise God. In other words, somebody says, I wonder what God's purpose is in this to set you free. Wonder what God's purpose is in this sickness to heal you. Wonder what God's purpose is in this bondage to deliver you. Wonder what God's purpose is for this test to come my way to get you out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. See, you need to discern between the purpose of the Lord and the work of the devil. See, a lot of people, whenever they, they get under attack or something, they, they think, well, maybe this is the Lord trying to teach me something. Or this is the Lord putting this on me because I messed up. But, you know, James said that we are to never say that when you're tempted or tested or tried, it's the Lord doing it to you because he doesn't test anybody. Amen? He's not going to attack you with evil. He's not going to put something on you. No, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Notice he didn't just come to destroy the devil. He came to destroy his works. Come on. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 says that when Jesus came to this earth, he took upon himself the form of flesh and blood. He didn't take upon him the form of angels, but he came to this earth and he took upon him this, this form of flesh and blood. He became a human being so that through death he could destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And then he goes on and says, and set those people free who all their lifetime were subjected to the fear of death. Praise God. Aren't you glad Jesus came and triumphed over the devil? Amen. Jesus destroyed his power of death off of your life. What's that mean? Does that mean we'll never die? No, praise God. We ought to believe God and live as long as we can, live out our lives, live out the fullness of it, live out the number of our days. And when it gets time to go to heaven, just go ahead and pucker up, tell everybody bye and kiss them and go. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just live our life out. Praise God. 
But until that happens, we ought to not be afraid of anything the enemy can throw at us. Colossians 2.15 says that not only did Jesus destroy the devil, but he triumphed over the demon forces that try to carry out the devil's works. But listen to me, folks. Jesus didn't just defeat the devil, and he didn't just defeat demons. He came to destroy the works that he has tried to do in your life, praise God to set you free from these things. Somebody says, what are those works? John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. So whenever I want to know if it's a work of God or a work of the devil, I always use John 10, 10 as my measuring stick because he says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, praise God. And that word life there is Zoe, the God kind of life. I've come that your, my life could be imparted into you and you could enjoy my life in an abundant manner, praise God. In other words, you can walk in all that my life provides for you, praise God. So anything that kills, steals, and destroys is of the devil. Does sickness kill, steal, and destroy? Left unchecked, it will. How about addictions and, and, and things that keep you in bondage? Will they kill? Sure they will. Left unchecked, they'll destroy your life. But Jesus came to what? Destroy everything that steals, kills, and destroys. Hallelujah and came to give us life, and they give it to us more abundantly. So therefore, we need to believe God and walk in these things. Now, look in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4, the Lord Jesus is, is speaking to us. He's come, uh, he just actually came out of the wilderness here. He'd been uh, baptized by John in the River Jordan. And the Bible teaches us that whenever he was baptized, came up out of the water, the Spirit of God like a dove came upon him, and he was filled with the Spirit. John 3 says that he received the Spirit without measure, meaning one, he was filled up with the fullness of the Holy Ghost. He descended upon him like a dove, and he was filled with the Spirit from that time on. And after Jesus was filled with the Spirit, the Bible says that the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and he was there for 40 days. And during that 40 days, he fasted and prayed, and when it was over, Satan came with those three temptations. And so the Lord Jesus there in the wilderness takes on every test the devil throws at him with the Word of God. And instead of being like the first Adam did and, and being deceived by the devil and, and letting the devil take advantage of him, this last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, took the Word and defeated the devil. Hallelujah. Adam lost to the devil in the garden, but Jesus defeated the devil in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And so then the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, not only was he filled with the Spirit, but he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit, praise God, walking in the anointing of the Spirit. And the anointing of God was upon him. And he, and he comes to the, the, the people there, and he opens up the Bible in Isaiah 61, and he says here in verse 18 of Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus begins to speak to them about his ministry. He finds his ministry in the Scripture. He begins to declare to them, I am the one that Isaiah is prophesying about and speaking about. Now, John says Jesus came for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Now, the Lord Jesus here in Luke chapter 4 is going to tell us what he came for. And he says this, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. He has empowered me. He has given me the power and the ability. That's what the anointing of God is. It's the power of God. It's the manifestation of God. It's the glory of God. It's the ability of God. So he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty and deliverance to captives. He has sent me to bring recovery to the sight of the blind and to set at liberty those who are or oppressed or bruised or beat down or downtrodden by the calamities and the struggles of this life, praise God. And then he goes on and says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So the Lord Jesus begins to show us his works as compared to the devil's works. He says the devil's works is to hold you in bondage, but I've come to preach the good news to you. The devil's works is to keep you poor and not have enough, but I've come to tell you that God wants to meet all your needs abundantly, praise God. The devil wants to hold you in captivity, but I've come to liberate you. The devil wants you bruised and beat down and downtrodden, but I've come to deliver you from that and bring you out, praise God. The devil wants to tell you that you're never going to make it, but I've come to deliver you the, the good news that I, have, I am the Jubilee, that I am preaching to you that you can be saved, you can have the favor of God, you can be delivered by God's power because I've come to set you free, hallelujah, amen. 
See, you and I have to believe that. We have to believe that Jesus has come to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Amplified Bible says, The day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God's favors are free? Lord, I need a favor here. Sure, what do you need? Well, I'd like to get healed tonight. No problem. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, I need a favor tonight. What is it? Well, I need to deliver tonight. No problem. That's why I came. Lord, I need, I need tonight to, to be set at liberty from some of the things that have been holding me back and keep me captive. No problem. Hallelujah. Because my favors are free and they profusely abound. What's that mean? There's more favors than you can ask for. Hallelujah. There's more favors from God than you could use in a lifetime. Some people say, well, I don't want to use all my stuff up. You can't use it up. He'll do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. And when you've used all you can think, he's got more. When you've used all you can ask, he's got more. Hallelujah. And he's right there to help you. He's there to do this. And then he said down here in verse 21, he said, and he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, the fulfillment of that scripture is in me. It's not in a time segment. It's not in a dispensation. The fulfillment of this is in me. And so when you get me, it doesn't matter whether it's 3 B.C. or whether it's 2014. Amen? Amen. Are you listening to me? Because it's not in a number. It is in a relationship, praise God. Because this deliverance is not whether you lived 100 years ago or 2,000 years ago. It's whether you're living with Jesus right now. Because if you're living with Jesus right now, this all belongs to you because this is fulfilled in Him. Come on, church, it's not fulfilled in you. It's not fulfilled in works. It's not just fulfilled because you've got a Bible. It's not fulfilled because the Bible says so. It's fulfilled because Jesus is exactly who he says he is and did exactly what he said he would do, and he's real whether you've ever read the Word or not. Come on, healing is yours if you never read it in the Bible. It doesn't change it because it's in Jesus. This Word is a description to you and me of who Jesus is and what he'll do for us. That's all it is. It's a manual for Christians to live by. Praise God. Some of you are getting defeated because you're leaving your manual in your glove box. Anybody still remember what a glove box is? Hallelujah. It's that little place over in the dashboard. See, we get a car and we want to get our manual. And, and, you know, you go to a lot of people and if they buy a new car and keep it for four or five years, you ask them, where's the owner's manual? And I bet you, almost bet you a nickel to a plug nickel. And I'm going to tell you something. It will still have the plastic paper wrapped around it because they never have opened it up to even look at it yet. And then they get mad because they don't know why certain things don't work. Amen. Because you've got to get the manual out if you want to know. Wonder what that button is. Don't touch it. It might be an eject button. You know? No, find what the manual says and read it, and it'll tell you what that button will do for you. Praise God get in a car and all the lights are flashing you say won't you fix your lights well i don't know how well there's a book in that <laughs> place over there tell you exactly how to set those lights and what color you want them hallelujah and they'll make that little thing on your dashboard quit blinking and we'll get in there it doesn't matter you know what you can get in a car lay your hands on that dashboard and say, oh god i'm believing you right now fix these lights and it won't happen will it but you know what you open up the book and you push a couple of buttons, and all of a sudden, everything just works like it should. You know what you do? You open up this book, and it tells you who Jesus is and what he'll do for you. And then you just act on what it says, and you say, glory to God, this isn't in how old I am or what age I'm living in. It's in my relationship with Jesus Christ and believing his purpose for me. What was his purpose? His purpose was to come and set me free. His purpose was to come and undo whatever the enemy's trying to get done in my life. His purpose was to come and dissolve those works, destroy those works, and put them out of my life so that I could live a victorious life in him. Amen? Now, let me show you how we get a hold of this. Look in Mark's gospel. You're right there in Luke. Turn a few pages to your left and go to Mark chapter 16. Jesus Christ comes to this earth and he does these great works and he ministers to people and he preaches this gospel of the kingdom and, and, and then he goes to the cross for you and me. He's beaten for you and me. He, he, he suffers shame and, and, and punishment for you and me. Even before he dies, he goes through, through great agony. 
And the Bible says in Hebrews 12 that, that for the, the joy that was set before him, he endured the shame and the suffering of the cross. He was looking ahead at Satan's destruction. He was looking ahead at demons being de defeated. He was looking ahead at the kingdom of God coming forth. And whosoever would call upon him would be delivered out of bondage. Jesus was working for you and me, praise God. And the Bible teaches us that, that Jesus redeemed us from the curse when he was on that cross. He redeemed us from sin. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we could be made righteous in him. He took our, 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 our pains and our punishments upon himself so that we could have peace and well-being. He, he took our, our, our poverty and lack and want. Why? 2 Corinthians 8 9 says he was, he was made to be poor, that in his poverty we may be made rich. What's he talking about? He, he, he took your needs upon himself so you could have his supply. It's not God's will that you and I not get our prayers answered or our bills paid or our needs met. He wants to move in our lives. Hallelujah. He took our sicknesses and diseases upon himself, Matthew 8, 17 says. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says that by the stripes that wounded him, those stripes that those Roman soldiers put upon him before he went on the cross, they were there beating him so that by his stripes and wounds, the nails that went into his hands and the stripes and the thing, that was there to heal us and deliver us and bring us victory. Everything Jesus did was to set us free. He was taking upon himself the works that you and I should have to suffer. And he was undoing them. He was setting you free from them. See, Jesus doesn't have to take another lash upon his back to heal you. He's already done it. Jesus doesn't have to be made stripped down and, and put on a, a cross naked and made poor anymore because he's already done it. Jesus doesn't have to feel the anguish of being rejected and the shame of being rejected and the, and the, and the pain of, of, of being hung on a cross anymore to set you and me from that. He's already done it. The price has been paid. And then the Lord is raised from the dead. And when he's raised up from the dead, Revelation says that he rose up from the dead with the keys of death and hell in his hands, praise God. He rose up, in Hebrews says, in chapter 2, with a crown of righteousness on his head, praise God. And God raised him up and declared him God. He said, thy throne, O God, is forever in Hebrews chapter 1. And so Jesus is Lord, and he's Lord of lords and King of kings, and he's the head of the church, praise God. And he's seated at the right hand of God, and he's there making intercession for you and me. But, but, but before he left, he called the disciples together, and, and he gave them authority to begin to act in his stead. Why? Because he's going to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. He's going to heaven to direct the kingdom. He's going to heaven there to hear our prayers. He's going to heaven to stay in our behalf. He's going into heaven so he can be our shepherd and our mediator and our advocate and our Lord. And he's being there for us, praise God. He's our representative before the throne of God. And Jesus turns to his disciples and he's, he, he gives them his authority, he gives them his power, he gives them his name. But then he didn't just give it to them, he gave it to us all. And I can prove it to you because here in Mark 16, he says this in verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel. Go tell them the good news. Go tell them the good news. Tell them I've already died so they could be alive. Tell them I was beaten so they could be healed and delivered. Tell them I'm the anointed one that's come so they could be liberated from captivity of all kinds and set free in their life. Go and tell them my anointing is just as strong today as it was when I walked the earth. And he says, whoever will believe this and embrace this and be baptized, shall be saved, and will be delivered, and not be condemned, praise God. What's he saying? He's saying, you have to receive this for it to work for you. That's right. You understand that? See, you have to receive Jesus as your healer, and that he has provided healing for you before healing can manifest in your life. Even though he's already provided it, you have to receive it. You have to believe it. You have to embrace it. You have to accept it as yours. See, this is the thing about the kingdom of God. It's an individual choice. See, even though you and I together make up the body of Christ as the whole, we are individually the body of Christ also. 
See, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I am a living stone placed into the house of God. I have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And I have to make him my Lord, my healer. And I have to receive this thing for me. Are you hearing me? See, I just can't get in on a group thing. I have to accept it myself. And Jesus is saying, go preach this good news. Go tell this good news to the people. And if they'll accept it, embrace it, and receive it, and act upon it, it'll save them. It'll heal them. It'll deliver them. It'll work in their lives, praise God. Why? Because Jesus has released it to us. How do I get delivered tonight? I accept it. Well, don't I have to earn it? No. He said, if you'll believe and receive it, it'll work for you. Well, how do I get set free from all? You have to believe and receive it. Because, you see, Jesus is the healer. And he's still the healer. He's the deliverer. He's still the deliverer. He's still the one that's destroying yokes, and he'll destroy your yoke. But you've got to believe the gospel. You've got to believe that he is exactly who the Bible says he is. Amen? Somebody says, well, how do I do that? Well, you might have to do it just like the man there in Mark chapter 9 did. He came to Jesus and asked him to set his son free. He said, I brought him to your disciples, and they, they never did get it done. And so I'm bringing him to you, see if you can do anything. And Jesus looked at him, and he, he's talking to him. And, and, and so uh, the, he turns to the man in Mark 9, 23. He says, listen, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. All you have to do is believe. You know what the man did? The man got real honest with him when that happened. He said, Lord, I believe now, would you help me in my unbelief? In other words, I'm going to go as far as I can, and you take over from there. And you know what? God honored that. You know, Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, just to, that, I mean, have you ever seen one? They are so small. He said, if you use that faith, even that little bit of faith, you can move mountains. You know, a lot of times we think we have to have great faith to receive victory from God. No, you just have to use what you got. You have to reach out and embrace it with all that you have and trust him to take care of the rest of it. Praise God. You know, I've gotten, in, in fact, a lot of times people will get it quicker that way than they will if they think they've got great faith. People come to God and they start telling him all they know and all they've done and how much they prayed and, and how good they are and how, you know, I haven't missed church in, in, you know, so long. And God, if anybody ought to get healed and delivered, it ought to be me. Well, look how much I've done for you. And God looks at him and goes, hmm, trying to get it on your own merit, huh? Well, let's judge that compared to me. And all of a sudden, he shines light on us, and we don't look so good. Amen? Now, no, don't get me wrong. You ought to read. You ought to pray. You ought to study. You ought to be in church as often as you can. I mean, that's going to help you grow. But don't go to God and tell him you need to get delivered because you've been doing all that stuff. You should be doing all that stuff because you love God. But when you come to the Lord, you know what you do? You say, Lord, I've got fears. I've got thoughts. I've got struggles. My flesh is fighting me. Things are attacking me. But I believe you're greater than that. And Lord, I'm going to reach out with what faith I have and trust you to help me through this thing. And Lord, whenever I start running thin, I'm going to ask you to take over. Hallelujah. You know what you just did? You just put yourself with the free favors of God. Remember he called them free favors? The free favors of God can come to you. And God can bless you. Praise the Lord. So Jesus says, you got to go tell them the good news. And then they've just got to reach out and say, Lord, not by my might nor power, but I believe and I ask you to do this for me. And then look what he says in verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. Praise God. See, if I get to believe and something's going to follow me around. Amen. Somebody says, how do I know if I'm a believer? Well, look around and see if there's any signs following you. <laughs> Amen. See, a mama dog doesn't have to wonder if she's got any pups. She gets up and takes off, and pups will get out of bed and follow her around. You know what? If we're a believer, we ought to be seeing some signs. Some things should, good things should be happening. Why? Because we're trusting God. We're stepping out. We're believing Him. Amen? And see, and if we don't have some signs following us, if things aren't happening in our lives, then we need to work on our believing, don't we? We need to get back and start embracing the Word again and, 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 and putting our eyes up back on Jesus again. Praise God. But notice he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Look at that. We're to use his name. Look what we're supposed to do. We're, they shall cast out 
demons. What does that mean? That blessed be God, you and I have authority to take the devil down and defeat him right out of our lives. Amen? You and I, I'm going to tell you, what's, what, are you, what are you talking about, demons? Well, you know, the Bible talks about over in 2 Timothy, that chapter 1, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Notice he calls fear a spirit. Well, you know it's not from God, so it must be an evil spirit. Isn't that right? He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You know what that means? That means if fear starts attacking you, you ought to just say in the name of Jesus, you spirit of fear, I rebuke you and drive you out of my life. And just run it off. You've got authority to cast out demons. See, see, a lot of times we think demons are some little, you know, ugly looking something that's going to show up with slobbers and... and But he, he calls spirit. He calls fear spirit. He calls that a demonic spirit that's coming to torment your mind. And so you just need to deal with it. Amen. And so anything, the enemy, anything that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy, anything that's trying to hold you in bondage, anything that, that's, that's getting your mind off of God is of the devil. So you know what you ought to do? You just stop and say, in the name of Jesus. I bind that and drive it off in Jesus' name. I'll not think that. I'll not have that. It'll not happen in my life. Amen. You have a right to do that. You have a right to do that. Jesus said so. Praise God. So in the name of Jesus, the next time you find yourself in fear or frustration or, or anger or all this stuff's trying to do, you know the enemy's going, is doing, uh, trying to do a work. You stop and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind every devil, every demon, every attack of the enemy right now. I have authority over you, devil. Jesus said, I can tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Luke 10, 19. So therefore, in the name of Jesus... I command everything that's not of God to leave this place. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. Sometimes you're, you're, you're restless at home and, and you can't get to sleep. And you're laying in bed and all these things are flooding in and you're just, just agitated. And so if you don't know what you have to do, instead of laying there and trying to fight it in the flesh and, and count sheep, <laughs> you know what you have to do is you have to stop and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind every disruptive thing that's trying to steal my sleep. I command you, devil, to leave this place and go and don't return. And I speak the peace of God over me in Jesus' name. And then just pray in the Spirit, worship God, and go right on off to sleep. Hallelujah. Because, see, demons operate in the unseen realm. And they come to agitate, irritate, provoke fear and worry and anxiety. But you know what? Sometimes you need to deal with that spirit and just say, no, no, no. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Now leave. Amen. There are times things are going on around you. Maybe you're, you're in a situation and people are doing the wrong thing. Just under your breath, just say, I bind every spirit that's not of God in Jesus' name. You, you'd be amazed, at, you know, when you believe that and exercise your authority in the Lord. You'd be amazed to watch people just shut up. I've done that before and people just stopped talking and looked around. Amen. Turn around and walk off. Just break up and just go. And I said, glory to God, now I can have some peace. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Didn't say a word to them. I would, they wasn't my problem. See, our battle, our fight, our contention is not with flesh and blood. Our contention is with the demon forces of hell that are trying to carry out the devil's works. Amen. But Ephesians 6 says that we to put on the armor of God and be strong in the Lord and bind those things in Jesus' name. Amen. See, you and I can do this. This is for you and me. Jesus came to destroy the works, and now he's given you and me authority to walk in his victory. Praise God. Look what else he goes on. He says this. He goes on in this 17th verse. says, in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Glory to God. Look at that. I can be filled with the Holy Ghost, and I can help you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know that in Acts 19, that when, Peter, when Paul showed up there in Ephesus, he found those 12 disciples, and he asked them, you know, well, the first thing he asked them, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And their response was, I haven't even heard whether there is a Holy Ghost or not. And so he says, well, then what were you baptized? And they said, in John's baptism. He said, well, that's good. But listen, John baptized you with the baptism of repentance. But let me tell you who he was talking about. He, and he begins to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and begins to tell them. And so they give their hearts and lives to the Lord. And, John, and Paul takes them down and baptizes them in the river. And then he lays his hands upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and prophesy. We can lay hands on people. We can, we, can be, we can help people be filled with the Holy Ghost, praise God. 
and minister to them. Look what the next thing he says here in verse 18. He says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, they shall by no means hurt them. What's he talking about? Divine protection in the name of Jesus. Why do you think you pray over your food? You, you, you speak the name of Jesus. You bless that food in the name of Jesus. And even if you get something bad, God will protect you through it. Hallelujah. In Acts, 19, in Acts 28, when Paul is, is shipwrecked, what's he do when he comes off of that boat? He goes up, he gets to the bank, he begins to gather sticks, puts them on the fire, and what happens? A snake bites him. What did he do? He shook it off. Hallelujah. That's how you handle a snake. You shake it off back in the fire. Hallelujah. And nothing happened to him. Divine protection. You see, God wants us to walk in the authority of the name of Jesus and walk in the power of God because there's an enemy that's out to defeat us. But through the name of Jesus, we have victory over him, praise God. What's the next thing he says? And in my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Glory to God. You know, that's not just for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. That's for believers. That's for God's people. You and I, when we get an opportunity to pray for somebody, we always ought to try to touch them. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can't do anything but grab a hand. Why? Because you're believing God. You're coming into contact. You're releasing the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ into their life. That's why we lay hands on people. That's what we're going to do here in just a few moments, praise God. Why do I lay hands? Because I've learned that, that laying on of hands, according to Hebrews 6, is one of the principal doctrines of, of Christ. The doctrine of laying on of hands. Read it over in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. And, and you'll find out that the laying on of hands, there's an anointing that flows out. And, and, and the power of God is released. And the laying on of hands is a way that God ministers to people, praise the Lord. And he'll put anointings on people. There, there are certain anointings that come on people. And, 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 and God anoints us to do certain things, praise God. And one of the things he'll do is he'll anoint some. Every believer can lay hands on people and help them to get free. And we should be doing that. But then God also anoints certain ones to lay hands on people and minister. And one of the things that's happened in my life from the time I got filled with the Holy Ghost in 1977, from that time on, every time I would get around somebody, God, God began to teach me, and I began to get in the Word. One of the first things He showed me, He says, now lay hands on them in my name, and I'll heal them. Praise God. Lay your hands on them in my name, and I'll set them free. And we begin to lay hands on people right there, praise God, and, and begin to minister to them. And we begin to see healings take place. We begin to see people get delivered. We begin to see great and mighty things take place. And then I went to Bible school, and I began to find out that there are anointings that God places on people, and He operates through these things. And that's an anointing that I've operated in since 1977. And when we pray and we teach on it and we believe God, then God releases that. Hallelujah. See, these are things that Jesus wants to do in our midst. Folks, this is the age that God's wanting to do that in. Jesus came, and it's in him, and it's for us right now to have this in our lives. It's God's will for you to be set free right now. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Right now. Just like it's his will for you to be saved right now. See, some people say, I don't know if it's God's will to heal me tonight. Is it God's will to save you tonight? Well, if it's God's will to save you tonight, it's God's will to heal you tonight. Well, I don't know if, if I'm ready to get delivered. Are you ready to get saved? Well, yeah, all I've got to do to get saved is believe on Jesus. Well, guess what? To get delivered, all you've got to do is believe on Jesus. Same thing that gets you saved will get you delivered. It'll get you healed. It'll get you filled. It'll get you set free. It'll bring liberty into your life. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing how we, we, we tell people to get saved right now? Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. But then we'll tell people, now hold in there, hang in there until you're, you're ready to receive something. No, you're ready to receive right now. You don't have to get better to get saved. You don't have to get better to get healed. You don't have to know more to get saved. You don't have to know more to get healed. See, those are lies of the devil. Well, you're going to have to study the Word more and get more Scripture in your life. And if you get more verses and memorize more verses, then you can get healed and delivered. No, you can't. You can get healed and delivered right now not knowing anything. Just believing on Jesus. Amen. Now, it helps to know and learn, learn things in the Word, but that's not what's going to get you set free. It's putting your faith and trust in the Lord. Amen. 
Now let's finish this. And look what he says. And so then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up in heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. Look at that, everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. The Lord did it. See, we, we, we lay hands and he heals. We preach and he saves. We believe and he responds. Amen. It's the Lord doing it, not us. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, as we were, were praising the Lord, I kept hearing these first words in my spirit. And it kept going. And, 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 and so I, I believe the Lord wants me to speak just this out to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that will come your way. For the enemy has a roaring lion roams about with a ravaging hunger, desiring to devour all that he possibly can. And think not and say within yourself, maybe I'm the cause of this. For you are not the cause, for the enemy himself is the cause, for he is a sinner from the beginning and has devoured people through his own appetites, not because of things they have done nor not have done, but because he is an enemy to all mankind. And think not whenever the enemy comes roaring and trying to devour and defeat you and bring you down, that maybe the Lord has sent this upon me so that I will be humbled. For the Lord sends not tests and trials upon you to bring you down, nor to humble you. For the Lord sends the Holy Spirit to bring you up and to bring you into a place of humility through His Word and through the teachings of the Scriptures. So you listen to your heart, not your head. For your heart will lead you to the Lord in times of tests, and your head will lead you into trouble but go ahead and educate your head renew your mind to think the thoughts of God and you'll begin to rise up begin to submit yourself to God and you'll begin to rise up begin to say no 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 this is not the Lord doing this to me this is the devil and I don't have to yield to this for the Lord has delivered me through the power of salvation and redemption rise up and stand upon the word stand upon your relationship Relationship, stand upon the truth, and the truth of God's Word will give you the victory in the midst of the test and the trial. Stand and speak the Word, for when you begin to speak the Word in faith, it becomes a weapon of the Spirit, a sharp, two-edged sword that shall go forth and cut asunder the very strings and yokes that the enemy would try to keep you in bondage with. Rise up and say no to the lies of the wicked one and yes to the truth of the Holy One. And as you walk in the truth of the Holy One, that truth will absolutely work a mighty work in your life and set you free. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I want you to stand with me, praise God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for the anointing of God. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands up and praise Him just for a minute. Just pray in the Spirit if you're filled. Just minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Glory be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I keep hearing the Spirit of God down on inside of me. Amen. Every now and then you just have to speak out what He wants you to say. Prophecy. Speaking out in behalf of what the Lord was saying. Now, I, heard, I hear this down in my spirit. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and find strength and safety. For there in the name of the Lord is healing and health. In the name of the Lord is deliverance and power and might. There in the name of the Lord is everything you will ever need. There in the name of the Lord you shall find safety, strength, and power to get you through the very adversary's attacks. For the name of the Lord is a mighty stronghold. It is a stronghold to the saved. It is a stronghold to the anointed one. It is a stronghold that cannot be penetrated by the enemy. It is a stronghold that has been set forth that you might run into it in times of trouble and say, now, now, now am I protected. Now am I covered. And now do I find the, ref the refreshing 
Now do I find in the name of the Lord the strength that I need to go forth. And then as you walk out from the tower, you will see that the battle is the Lord's. You will begin to see that as you rested in his name, he stretched forth his mighty hand and brought down the very thing that the enemy was using against you. For the name of the Lord destroys the yokes. The name of the Lord rolls the burdens away. The name of the Lord brings salvation to the lost. It brings healing to the sick. It brings deliverance to the captive. And it sets those free who are bound by the enemy. So run into the name of the Lord and let the name of the Lord be your strength. Put the name in your heart. Put the name in your lips and begin to speak it forth in reverence and you'll begin to experience the power and the anointing that the name of the Lord carries within it. For that name has been exalted above all names and at that name, the name of Jesus, every knee and everything and every being in heaven and earth and beneath the earth must bow and every attack must be drawn back and every weapon must be destroyed for there there is nothing, nothing that the enemy has that can overpower the name of Jesus. So walk in the name, rejoice in the name, and proclaim your victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise, folks. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we're just going to do it this way. Praise God. Whatever you have that is trying to hold you in bondage, whatever the enemy is trying to do to hinder your life, whether it would be a sickness, whether it would be something that, that, that is some kind of a bondage in your life, some area that, that you need to get set free from, I want you right now to come up here and step out and say, I'm coming in faith to believe and receive from my God tonight. This yoke shall be destroyed. This burden shall be rolled away. And I come to receive in the name of Jesus that which God has for me. Hallelujah. Come on, church. You're not coming to, to ask God for it. You're coming to receive it. Amen. There's a difference in asking and receiving. A lot of people are good at asking but bad at receiving. We need to get good at receiving. Hallelujah. How do I get good at receiving? I just humble myself in the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, I receive. I just believe I receive. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to try to get good enough to get it. I'm not going to stand up here and make a deal with you. I'm just going to release my faith and believe this gospel. I'm just going to believe this gospel. Amen. Just going to believe that right now begins my victory walk. Right now begins my deliverance. Right now begins my healing. Right now begins everything that I need from God. Right now, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe right now. I just want you to say this after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart. I declare you are my Lord, and I receive you doing for me what I cannot do for myself. Thank you, Lord, for destroying the works of the devil out of my life and setting me free. Now just lift your hands up and begin to thank Him for your victory right now. Thank Him for your victory right now. Father, I thank you and praise you for the word. And Lord Jesus, right now, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, not by my might nor power, not in my name, nor my holiness, nor even in my goodness, Lord, but in your name. In your name, I lay hands upon them and come in agreement. In your name, Lord Jesus, I speak healing, deliverance. I speak the power of God. In your name, Lord Jesus, in your name, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Now receive, 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 receive. Just receive. Just reach up with your faith and be free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Now just stand there and let it work in you. Just stand there and let it work in you. Praise God. He shall reign most in the name of Jesus. That's it. Reach up and receive.
Lift your hands up to God tonight and begin to thank Him right now. Begin to praise Him right now. Begin to declare your deliverance. Begin to declare right now your freedom. Come on, if you needed healing tonight, begin to declare yourself healed. Speak it out of your mouth. Declare, I am healed in the name of Jesus. If you came here bound with something tonight, just begin to declare, I am delivered right now by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, church. You got to embrace it. It'll work in you, but you got to work with it, praise God. And as you allow it to work in you, it brings forth that which Jesus said. Let it work. Let it work. Let it work right now. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I stand in the power of your name. And I declare that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets me free from the law of sin and death. I rebuke and reject all guilt and condemnation from my past. I believe the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me, forgives me, heals me, and delivers me, and I am made whole. And this moment, I am free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, and He sets me free. I walk in my freedom. I embrace my freedom, and I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, I will stay free. Amen. And now give Him praise. Hallelujah. 